Hi everyone and welcome along to the latest instalment of This Racing Life and this week we cross both codes as we creep ever closer to the end of the flat turf season and welcome back the jumps this autumn. Here's what's coming up. I just love him to bits. He makes the hairs on the back of your neck stand up some mornings. As it is we've got a fresh horse going into the autumn um, which I always like you know. I think September is one of the best months around because you're, you're working all the horses at home at, on, on the gallops and you know leading up to what hopefully is a very exciting winter. I spent more time riding out for trainers around Exeter than I actually did in the lectures. The curtain call for the flat season isn't far away and one man who will look back fondly at 2019 is Roger Teal. He's dreaming of big race targets with three-year-old Oxted, who bucked the trends when taking the Portland on his final start this season. I didn't do the stats before the day, but um, I say building up the last week towards the Portland, he'd been pleasing us so much at home um, and he, he looked great in his skin and everything. and and. When, when I declared and we got the draw 14 and you know we, we, I, I was happy with that and everything was thing and then I think it was the night before I started doing the stats and seeing that well, no three-year-olds win this race and of course he was second top weight and then he sort of sort of lost a little bit of confidence then but uh, thankfully he did what he did and uh, now he's, he's put the records right. He was a very big two-year-old, backward sort of, you know, back end. We only managed to get a run into him as a two-year-old on the last day of the flat season. Um, so then we decided then just to put him away. Didn't want to run him on the all weather. Um, and then he came out first time out this year at Salisbury and you know, absolutely hacked up. Yeah, and, and that was uh, over seven, wasn't that it? That was over seven. And then uh, I ran him, I have got brave and ran him in the listed race at um, Newbury. He finished second to Gadim, and uh, he was he was so, so on it that day that he had one, just one blot on his copybook was at Donny in that sort of four horse muddling race at Donny for, I don't know, it just didn't go right in the day. Um, but he, he, he bounced back at Newmarket and was a tad unlucky at Newmarket, just fluffed his lines at the start a little bit and ended up further back than we wanted. But he finished the race off well and he, and he moved forward after that. So uh, yeah, and then he went and won the Portland. So. We were talking about the dam, but for something that unfortunate that happened at home, it, it might just have been that she'd have been a much higher rated horse when she went off to be a broodmare anyway. Yeah, I think so. I mean, she, she, she nearly got black type at Warwick one day um, and that, that was over seven and she didn't stay the trip and uh, like, I, I think she could have got black type uh, eventually somewhere, you know, but unfortunately uh, we, had a, we had a bit of a, uh, an unfortunate accident with a deer collided with her on the gallops and, uh, and, and she got a tendon so, so we, 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 uh, her career came to a bit of a, a short end really. How much of a weapon is he to go to war with in the sprinting division next year? Well, I think very exciting. I, 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 I always said, I stated before he ran in the Portland that whatever we did this year with him, it was only going to be a bonus because next year I can see a big future for him. So, yeah, I, look, he's got to progress, but I'm, I'm sure if we, if we give him a chance, he will. You've been intrepid with, with, say, horses like Tip to win, and obviously a few years further back you go to Dubai with the likes of Steel Tango. Is there any, any temptation to do that with Oxted early in, in 2020? Uh, not at the moment, no. Um, I think we've just got to keep our feet on the floor. Um, you know, obviously speak to the owners and, and if we, we'll make a plan with him when he comes back into training again, in, in, probably just in the new year. And, um, and, but we'll, we'll just see how he winters, I think, and then we can make a sort of solid plans in the new year. The dam loves soft ground. Obviously, he's by Mason and, and a horse who, who, of course, enjoyed soft ground himself. And, but this horse doesn't necessarily need that at all, does he? No, it, actually, it, all, his, all his lesser runs have been on, on a soft surface. So, I mean, he has a, when we watched the race, the rerun of the Portland, you, both the wife and me we were looking at him and his actions suggest he wants soft ground. but. But he's he's coped with this faster surface much better. So uh, maybe when he's fully strengthened up, he he, he might he, he might go back to liking the, the softer surface. But you know, at the moment, he's coping with the quicker surface. Is there a dream race with him? Uh, I'd like. To, I know it's probably very high, but I, I I'd like to sort of. Um, I'll, 
got the July Cup in mind. That, that's my target. Um, if he progresses, obviously, we're not going to go there. Like I say I won't throw him in at the deep end if he's if he's not good enough. But that's something I'd like to build. So yeah. Patience has been the key to Oxted, and a similarly patient approach has been the story of Mohafa this season for Marcus Tregoning, albeit for different reasons. Injured prior to the 2000 Guineas in the spring, is now full steam ahead for the three-year-old Colt taking on his elders in the QE2 next up. It's so important to have a flag bearer if you possibly can, you know, and it, uh, it makes a big difference. And, um, you know, he, he seems to have come back in very good shape. Um, they did a very good job with him, convalescing him at Shadwell. Yeah. And, and they got him cantering a bit for me. So um, you know, he's used to these surroundings. He's, he's a very sensible horse. And I don't take it, think he takes a huge amount to get him ready. Um, and as you saw this morning, he's, he's, in, <laughs> he's in very good health at the moment. I'd certainly be very happy at this stage. And of course, it's important to have a flag bearer. We last saw Mahatha on the racetrack back in, in mid-April in the green, which he won. He was then going to go for the guineas, but was then ruled out. What, why was that again, just to bring us up to speed? And, and what have been the stages of recuperation? Well, in the, in, unfortunately, at Newbury, um, I remember the closing stage of seeing him drift a little bit to the right and a little bit yeah. to the left. And then I thought, well, that's not very normal. And um, he actually uh, sustained a condylar stress fracture. Um, now that, um, you know, a difficult thing to manage, but he had a screw put in it. Um, there's no such thing as a small fracture. A fracture is a fracture, but he had a screw put in it. And just to help with the healing process, you can imagine you, that just helps the blood supply and um, obviously closing the, the, the um, fissures as quick as you can, um, it makes a big difference. Um, it certainly handles extremely well now, and um, I'm very pleased with his action, um, but obviously it ruled him out of the guineas. Um, having said that, I always felt he didn't probably want the ground too firm, so it might not have been his year anyway. It's been so dry. So even with a clear run, we don't know what would have happened had he have turned up to the guineas at the beginning of May, the likeliness is we wouldn't have seen that much of him midsummer. I think you're right. I, I think, you know, um, as it is, we've got a fresh horse going into the autumn, um, which I always like, you know. I mean, you know, in the old days, you know, imagine when we used to build up for those, um, the art weekend. Um, in the old days, a horse would have a, a break somewhere in middle season and try and go in there as fresh as you possibly could with possibly a prep run. Obviously, we're going into Ascot without a prep race, but I do feel this horse is, is a bit different. I mean, he. He, he's, he's an exuberant workhorse without overdoing it, but he does, he's not a difficult horse from that point of view. How does he compare, we, we saw him this morning and I have to say he looked electric. Um, how does he compare at home, the athlete at home, now to when he was going into the green and to when we last saw him racing? Well, I would say, um, to be quite honest, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm just very happy with where, where we are. I mean, yeah. it's difficult to say. We haven't, um, what you saw this morning was actually his first piece of work, but obviously he's had a, you know, we've had a very good um, preparation. We've been building up to it. He's done a few sharp canters and all that sort of thing on the grass over seven to a mile. And it's been a sort of gradual build up. But, um, you know, timing wise, it should be fine as long as we don't get any stops. And um, to analyse that performance back in the Greenham, where I think you were on record afterwards as saying he showed, he showed that bit of brilliance, which is, is that characteristic of him? Uh, yes, I would say. Um, you know, I think the thing is, you know, you get one of his sort of calibre, we're talking about sort of group horses and, and above hopefully, you know, group threes and above hopefully, that, you know, they, they are different. I mean, they've just got that, there's a bit more excitement. A bit of wow factor. That. There's a bit of wow factor, if you like. And uh, he's certainly got that. Um, and you know, he's not an overly big horse. So I'm just hoping that we just get a clear run from now on, um, that, um, you know, we'll get, that in, get to uh, Ascot in great shape. And I don't see why the track won't suit him. You'd have thought there'd be, um, you know, the ground would be possibly on the slow side, which would suit him again. And I like this idea of going with a fresh horse, as you know. The association with Sheikh Hamdan Al Maktoum, you can go back over the last couple of decades, and there have been some lovely horses that this partnership has, has seen together, you and the owner. How important has that relationship been between the two of you? Well, very important. I mean, you know, it just goes back a long way, the sort of Dick Hearn days. I remember when Sheikh Hamdan first arrived, yeah. you know, with the progeny of high to fashion. Obviously, Dick Hearn had trained the whole family, so it's a great to have got um, you know, the Nash ones and the Unf ones of this world in the early days. And um, yeah, we go back a long way. And the thing is, he, he's always appealed to me as a type of owner because he's very patient with his horses. He's never once said to me, you know, we must get to such and such a target, you know. 
And I remember when I first started training for him, I once I was getting very excited about a two-year-old who actually did do well, horse called Ekra. I remember he said to me, um, how do you think the horse is going? And I said, very well. And he, he said, um, why don't you just give him another couple of weeks <laughs> before you run him, you know? So uh, he's always been like that, you know, and, um, you know, we have a good rapport. Hopefully that will continue. This horse hasn't run in a group one yet, but um, in terms of the sensation that a good horse gives you, is this horse doing that? Um, well, I think he is, but, uh, you know, we know it is a big jump up. And the other thing is, how much stamina does he really have? I mean, showcasing is a predominantly, um, you know, he, he's, a, he's a speedy horse and, uh, you know, his progeny are generally pretty speedy. Uh, the, this family um, comes from a, from a family that gets further. So I'm, I'm hoping there's enough stamina on Madame's side to, and he settles well. That's yeah. the other thing. He doesn't, he's not a tear away. Um, and we won't um, let him do that. Um, he has good riders every day. I'm very lucky with the riders. I and mean, the team thing here is, is, is so important, you know. And it's taken me a while, I have to say, to get the, um, you know, the good riders back to me again because obviously I left Lambourne and, and uh, left all the staff behind, so I had to start again. Uh, but, but we're getting there. Is there anything, the, the element of, it's obviously a mile, so it's a bit further, it's a group one, but it's a straight mile in the QE2, and obviously he's done the straight seven at Newbury a couple of times. Does that, obviously, the straight element of a, of a race track, a different track though it is, does tend to, tend to suit him? Yeah, I think so. I mean, I don't see why he won't go around a turn or anything. I'm sure he would, but as you say, he's been in straight lines so far. And maybe, um, you know, I, I don't, I think the, the only question mark would have to be the, um, the mile because he shows, you know, you can see he shows dynamic speed as well. Uh, but then if you can translate that to the end of the race over a mile, well, it's pretty good. And while Mo Haffa has been on the sidelines during the flat season proper, Jamie Snowden has been making hay while the sun shines during the summer jump season. He's not far off already surpassing last season's amount of winners and is raring to go for the winter games to begin. I think September is one of the best months around because you're, you're working all the horses at home at, on, on the gallops and you know leading up to, to, to what hopefully is a very exciting winter. We've been very lucky that we've had a wonderful summer and a, and a great start to the season but um, you know, we've got some exciting horses for the winter hopefully. I just want to go through the, the figures from some of the summer months. Nine from 23 in May, four from 12 in June and five from 18 in, in July. Was it always the plan to hit the summer months pretty hard? No, I, we've had a similar number of runners to, to what we usually have uh, in the summer. Um, we've just had better horses, um, better horses to run on the on, on the better ground, really. Um, I, I always secretly try and you know get a few in the bag before before September, but mm. um, really to, to to have 25 um, on the board already is uh, it, it's incredible, really. You've got a serious buzz at this time of year because um, the summer horses have done their job and they've done their job brilliantly, but. Um, uh, We've got a really good team for the winter now, and I think you know we ran a few horses in 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 May. The Banner King Rebel, for instance, that um, is a winter horse, but we ran him in May because we he hadn't had much of a season last year, so we got a couple of quick runs into him in May before his summer holiday. So we've we've run a few through the early part of the summer that are actually winter winter horses, but they just ran a one in May. To a degree, going to, from what you've said there, say a horse like Pacify, who's been one of your leading lights in the summer. Looking at him in isolation, it, it doesn't feel like his job's done by any stretch, that, that hopefully what he's done in the summer is just a precursor to what he's going to do. Is that fair? Very, very fair. Um, he came off the flat from Rafe Beckett as a, obviously a very good horse, and we gave him plenty of time to, to get over his, his flat, flat sort of exploits last summer and, and got him rolling early this season. Um, obviously off the flat, I wanted to find a bit of nicer ground for him to have a nice experience first time out over hurdles. And, and really he's, he's won four races very nicely. Um, his targets, you would very much hope, are more sort of autumn and then spring related. Uh, I don't think he's going to be running at Chepstow through the depth of the winter, but uh, certainly we'll be looking at sort of autumn targets for him and then hopefully coming back in the spring again. The manner that he's gone about his business has been really exciting. You know, he's always been a horse that, that has loved his jumping, yeah. attacked his hurdles. We even scored him over a fence the other day and, you know, he, um, he, he, he loves his jumping, which is a big, big asset. And, and to transfer that flat ability to jumping is, is really exciting. He'll go there, obviously, extremely fit at Kempton midway through October, which is, is it to a degree over hurdles his first big test? Would you see it that way now? Yeah, very much so. I mean, obviously, he's dealt with, with carrying the penalties um, that he has done, and he's, and he's dealt with it very nicely. But um, certainly the, the listed novice at, at Kempton should be a, a harder test for him. Um, 
but there's nothing to suggest that, that, that he can't handle it. Um, and I'm very much relishing it. How much higher do you think he can rank over hurdles? Well, uh, certainly at the moment, you know, we're, we're, we're dreaming that yeah. he could go all the way to the very top in his, in his novice, novice campaign, really. Um, let's, get over, let's get over Kempton and work our way through perhaps Cheltenham in, in October and, and onwards. But, um, you know, so far we're, we're really excited. He's got some very illustrious owners. Fair to say enthusiastic ones at that. Yeah, very much so. Yeah. Um, Dutch and Cornwall and Chips Keswick, they, they're big supporters of the yard. They have been um, for a while, really. And, and um, they love it. They, 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 they get as much buzz out of it as, as, as you and I do. How exciting is the Banner King Rebel? There's obviously been a, a significant reason why he missed such a huge amount of time because he was a good bumper horse and then he ran in the champion bumper of 2018. But then it was a whole year plus a little bit more before we saw him again. Why was that? So he, um, he, he, he went in for, for a routine wind up and we found, uh, we found a growth in his throat. And this was after the champion bumper? After the champion bumper, yeah. He obviously choked in the champion. He won two bumpers very easily and we went to the champion bumper um, and he choked in that and actually pulled up. Gavin pulled him up, he, he was legless. Yeah. Um, we sent him up to have his, have his wind looked at and, uh, and obviously they, they operated on him and found this, found this growth in his, in his, in his airway. And um, he had that taken out. Uh, unfortunately, it grew back again. Um, so we had to go back in and, and really get the roots out of, of this growth. Um, so no wonder he, he couldn't breathe. You know, he had, um, he had a golf ball down his throat, basically. Uh, in your experience and, and, and that of the vet, was it to a degree one of, the, one of the more severe ones that you can have as well? Very much so, yeah. Um, so Ben, ben Brain, who, who operated on him, sort of treated him as, as a guinea pig, really. And I think he was in the vets basically for the best part of six months yeah. up, up at Ben's. And uh, I said to Chips, listen, I think we've probably got to write this horse off and, and forget about him. Um, thankfully, Ben did a brilliant job and got him right and, and, and brought him back. And we tipped away gently with him to see how he was going. And we had him schooling over hurdles. We were, we were contemplating running him in a, in, in a novice hurdle at, at, at Aintree, actually. Um, and we thought, oh, listen, let's, let's perhaps save that for, for, for next season and go for the, for the Grade 2 bumper. And, as you said, sort of 30 months after his last run, he, he then finished second in the grade two there to, to, to McFabulous of Nichols's. And what was amazing about that run is that he was, he was mad keen. He was like a boy in a sweet shop. He'd been off the track for, for 13 months and, and he was mad keen for about a mile and a half. Yeah. Um, so to finish off the race as well as he did was, was incredible. I suppose to, to a degree with him, it was almost like his first outing on the track where nothing was hindering him because you didn't know before because he was winning his bumpers easily before the previous year's champion bumper but then he suddenly let loose and, and he can breathe exactly exactly that and um you know that was a cracking run and we thought um on the back of that let's let's give him a little bit of experience over hurdles in may he obviously won his two novice hurdles quite nicely had a had a good summer holiday and, and hopefully cracking on for the for the winter it's obviously been a horse that you you seriously highly regard um in terms of early season targets have you mapped one out well there's the greater at Cheltenham in november which which looks um looks the race for him there there is a class three at weatherby which um we may consider beforehand but um certainly that that grade two at Cheltenham looks the right race for him he looks like a sort of morris minor but he's got a ferrari of an engine you know um He's a, he's a very talented horse and, and um, yeah, listen, we're very excited for him for this season. pleased with his hurdling so far? Yeah, very, very much so. He, um, he's been very quick over them and, and um, he, wouldn't be, he wouldn't be the most natural. He's taken a bit of work, um, but he's, he's, I thought his jumping at Warwick and, and at Newton Abbott was good. Um, still leaves a bit to work on for the season. And while the trainer has had a magnificent summer, the yard's conditional hasn't done badly herself. Paige Fuller joined Jamie's team as an amateur, but has translated that success to the pro game, improving her total each and every season. I sort of started out just riding out when I left school. Um, we had pointers at home, so it sort of worked flexibly with that as well. We were saying earlier, it, it could have been a totally different career trajectory for you because you, you were due to go and do economics at, at university, but was, was this always deep down what you wanted to be doing? Yeah, it was always really difficult. I mean, obviously, 10 years ago when I was picking my A-levels and everything, you know, there weren't that many female jockeys. Obviously, they were, there were a few, you know, um, and it wasn't around that time. Lucy Alexander was champion conditional as well, um, a little bit later. But she was obviously, you know, Lucy Gardner, everyone, they were doing well. But at the same time, it didn't look like an obvious career option for me. Yeah. Um, so I sort of hoped that I could mix in my amateur riding with um, getting a proper job as such but um, you know it just ended up that I realised that I just wanted to 
do a bit more in racing before I sort of went on to do that. So I left university after, I think, six weeks. So I did a gap year, and that's when I started riding out for Jamie. And then I went to university and just decided, actually, I, I would put that on the back burner. And How quick was that decision to, to say, go to university and perhaps this isn't for me? Um, about four weeks. <laughs> <laughs> I spent more time riding out for trainers around Exeter than I actually did in the lectures, so um, it made the decision quite simple. <laughs> the relationship between you and everyone that works here with Jamie, is it, is it quite a strong one? The nice thing about a yard this size is everyone counts. Yeah. You know, from Kate, the head lass, who works every hour under the sun and wants to, you know, you wouldn't know someone who does more for the yard. And um, then everybody else, we've obviously got Rodney Farrant, who himself was a brilliant jockey. And we've got all sorts of variety of people. And actually, not every horse is the same, so it's quite nice to have that mixture. And they all want to be here. They all love the horses, and it makes a real difference. Monbeg Theatre has obviously given you some tremendous days. The first Cheltenham winner, that good winner at Haydock as well. He's going back novice chasing. Are you, are you quite excited by the, the prospect of, of, of pinging him over a few fences this year? Yeah, definitely. I think he's matured a lot over the last sort of 18 months or Has so. He? You know, when, when I first um, sort of broke, sort of started up in that relationship, um, he, he always would miss a hurdle, you know, and, and, and at that point, it probably was coming back from his confidence, coming back to his confidence as well. Um, and throughout the last sort of 18 months, he's made less and less mistakes. Yeah. So hopefully, actually now, he's got it a bit more confidence in his head that when we put him in front of a fence, he might not get so confused and <laughs> might actually take to it a bit better. Jamie was saying earlier, he's a bit of a character on Beg Theatre. He said, he hates me. But presumably, you've got a bit of a, a better relationship going on with the horse than the trainer does. Yeah, I mean, he knows the relationship. He just does what he wants and I just sit there. So it's very simple. And bless her, Jazz, um, Jazz, who rides him every day as well. She gets on with him very, very well. And um, he was actually her first lead up ever at Cheltenham when Brilliant. he won. So, you know, we've been, me and Jazz and him have kind of gone through it all together. And it's quite, it's good fun. So what are, what are the, the dreams and aspirations for this new season proper as we go into the winter months? Yeah, I think I've got some I've got some really exciting rides to look forward to here and the rest of the yard. You know, Jamie's very supportive at, at getting me, encouraged me to always been encouraging me to get into other yards and I've yeah. built up some strong relationships with other yards now. Um, so I've got some really exciting horses like Monbeg um, to look forward to in the yard and away from the yard as well. It makes a big difference. In the next sort of 12 months, I, I would like to think that I'll be getting close to riding out my claim. I think that's the yeah. first thing that I really want to do in the next um, 12 months. And Obviously, how far are we, figures 20 wise? left. Yeah. 20 left. So, you know, I think, I think it's achievable. I had 18 minutes last season. Um, you know, I'd like to think I'll better that. And if I am, then I'll be very close to it at the end of the season. Um, and then just getting some bigger profile winners. You know, I was very lucky. I won a nice race on a horse called Big March for Harry yeah. Whittington up at Perth. And I think he's going to target some bigger races now. He's off a mark of 148. So, you know, horses like that hopefully would just take me the step forwards. And Monbeg as well, if he, he obviously took me to the festival um, last year. And hopefully if he takes to chasing, you don't know where he can go with that as well. What do you enjoy most about this? About the about the, the ability to go to other ride, uh, go to other stables, of course, and ride out, ride winners for Jamie, be based here, and, and do the day job. What do you enjoy most about it? Riding winners is brilliant, but actually teaching the babies and you know learning the keys to the older horses yeah. as well. Like there's a lot of horses that might come in that might be somewhere else as well, and it's all a big puzzle, isn't it? And actually, it's quite fun to be able to work with. Jamie and the other people in the yard and the other trainers and like obviously there'll be points where you're sort of chasing your tail but it is good fun and the variety and you know so many different horses and waves people train and everything it's very interesting. It's not just the jumps fraternity that are dreaming of next year's big targets. Back at Roger Teal's base in Great Shefford it won't just be Oxted he's looking forward to next summer. This unraced Kenzo Warrior is fighting off Mambo Knights. And Max Vega in the red might be the danger. They head towards the line. Kenzo Warrior in front, the red, and Max Vega is catching him with every stride. They come to the winning post. Tight between Kenzo Warrior and Max Vega, the pair clear of the others. I just love him to bits. He yeah. just he just uh, he makes the hairs on the back of your neck stand up some mornings. You know, he's he's very exciting for a for a yard of our size to have a, 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 a lovely horse like him, he's uh, he's very straightforward. He's um, he's a gorgeous looking horse, and um, yeah, very exciting. When you took him to Salisbury for that first race course outing, did you, were you of the well, were you of the opinion that he was going to show what he did? Yeah, I mean, Jason Watson had been coming in and rode him work for me a few times, and 
and Jason liked him a lot and um, I was keen to to keep Jason on him obviously when he ran yeah and and obviously with Mr Charlton having first dibs on on Jason he had one in the race but f fortunately for me he didn't declare it which was great and then Jason rode him and Jason was pretty bullish when I got the saddle and and uh, and uh, I know my owner was nervous but Jason assured him in the in the paddock that you know don't be worried that we've got a nice horse and and he just made out and made every yard of the running I did that was that shocked me a little bit um, uh, when I saw him in front I thought oh dear <laughs> but I thought well Jason knows what he's doing and and I just as, as he just as the race went through you could just see him building up and building up and and then that horse came to him very late on yeah of Wraith Beckett's and uh, to be fair he just knuckled down he stuck his head down and, and he showed you know show, he showed real good professionalism you know and uh, that's all you can ask and uh, you know again we're not going to get greedy we're not going to go too many times we try and find him another race now um before before the season ends and then i'd like to again look after him for next year and again he's a big sort of tall horse and he'll probably progress over the winter hopefully and strengthen up he said he makes the hairs on the back of the neck stand up does that happen often no i mean tip did it obviously we got very excited with tip but he was a two-year-old um and you know this fellow, when you see the way he works, the way he carries himself in his work, his attitude, he surprises you, you know? In terms of recent performances, I think you said after Bear Force won one at Newbury that he, he is just a, it's a bit of a cliche in racing, but sometimes, but he, he doesn't show you much and he just keeps surprising you when he hits the track. Well, he's a massive horse, he's, he's huge, you know, and he's leggy, um, he, he, again, he probably won't be, won't be at his best until next year. And he, you know, he, we ran him at Salisbury first out and he ran very green. He got left in the stores. He was, he was a bit slow away. It was on softer ground. He made a big effort to get into the race and that took his toll on him and he weakened towards the finish. Ran him at Windsor, which, you know, size of a horse he was, probably wasn't the best track to run him at. But he ran a solid race, finished fourth. Um, and then I say, then we went, we gave him a break again. I sent him over to Vicky's. He ran up a bit light after Windsor, sent him over to Vicky's for a couple of weeks. Vicky did some flat work in a sand school for, for me, um, built his top line up. And then we came back and we ran him and at, at Kempton. Yeah. And he was, he looked like Jerry the giraffe coming around the turn. He was all at sea, you know, he didn't know what leg to put in front of the other. But once he once he straightened up in that home turn and, and Jason gave him a tap, he he just took off and he was like, whoa, he <laughs> surprised us a bit. And I it was seven and I you know I I thought he'd be running on at the end, but I didn't think he had the speed for seven. And then I saw that race at Newbury and I thought, oh the track will suit him down to the ground. And um my only worry was I, I you know, late this September you think that the ground's gonna be good to soft, but we were running on good to firm and I don't know if he was, I, th I was just a little bit worried because he's a big horse, but Jason said, look, the ground's safe, it's, there's no jar in it. So, so we went ahead and it's history, he bolted up, so yeah. Well, unfortunately, that's all we've got time for on This Racing Life this week, but we'd like to thank all contributors who made this week's show possible. Thanks as well to you at home for watching. We'll see you again very soon. <laughs>